Hello and welcome to our video on Fraunhofer lines. You may have heard of these mysterious absorption lines that appear in the spectra of celestial bodies, but do you know what they are and what they tell us about the universe? In this video, we'll explain the science behind Fraunhofer lines and how they help us understand the chemical composition of planets, stars, and other celestial objects. So if you want to learn more about these fascinating phenomena, keep watching. Within the spectrum of starlight lies a chemical fingerprint. Dark or bright lines signpost specific wavelengths that are absorbed or emitted by the scorching gas in a star's atmosphere. These atomic markers were first noticed in light from the sun and have proven to be a powerful tool for astronomical detective work. They have revealed the chemical makeup of stars and galaxies, as well as the motions of celestial bodies and the expansion of the universe. If you pass sunlight through a prism, the rainbow spectrum that emerges is striped by a series of dark lines, like a barcode. These lines mark specific wavelengths of light that are absorbed by gases in the sun's atmosphere. Each line corresponds to a particular chemical element in various states and energies, from neutral atoms to excited ions. By mapping the pattern of the lines, you can determine the chemistry of the sun. Although English astronomer William Hyde Wollaston spotted these absorption lines in the solar spectrum in 1802, they were first examined in detail by German lensmaker Joseph von Fraunhofer in 1814, after whom they are named. Fraunhofer was able to identify over 500 lines. And with modern equipment, we can detect many thousands of them. Unique Chemistry In the 1850s, German chemists Gustav Kirchhoff and Robert Bunsen discovered in their laboratory that each element gives rise to a unique ladder pattern of absorption lines. In the sun, hydrogen is the most common element, and the solar spectrum also shows absorption from many other elements, including helium, carbon, oxygen, sodium, calcium, and iron. Each element has its own unique absorption line barcode. The light from other stars also carries chemical imprints. The study of spectral chemistry, known as spectroscopy, is a powerful technique in astronomy because it reveals the material that makes up stars, nebulae, planetary atmospheres, and distant galaxies. Astronomers cannot bring stars and galaxies into their laboratory or travel to them. So they must rely on remote observations and clever techniques. Sometimes, these lines appear bright rather than dark. These are known as emission lines. Very bright sources, such as the hottest stars and luminous quasars, emit photons at these characteristic wavelengths in an attempt to cool down. Fluorescent lights also emit a series of bright lines corresponding to the wavelengths of excited atoms in the gas within the tube, such as neon. To split light into its constituent wavelengths, gratings are often used. Rather than using bulky glass prisms, which are limited in their ability to bend light due to their refractive index, a component with a row of parallel narrow slits is inserted into the light beam. Fraunhofer made the first grating from aligned wires. Gratings work because of the wave properties of light. Light passing through each slit in the grid is spread out by diffraction, with the amount being proportional to the wavelength of the light but inversely proportional to the width of the slit. Very narrow slits spread the light out more broadly, and red light is diffracted more than blue light. The multiple slits combine the light further using another property, interference. Where peaks and troughs of light waves either reinforce or cancel each other out to create a superposed pattern of light and dark fringes. Within each of these fringes, the light is split even more finely. Again scaling with wavelength, but this time inversely proportional to the distance between the slits. By controlling the number of divisions, their separation, and width. Astronomers can control the amount by which the light is spread out and the finesse with which they can probe absorption and emission lines. Gratings are therefore much more powerful and versatile than prisms. A simple grating can be made from a photographic slide with slits etched into it. 
They are sometimes sold in science museum shops. If you put one up to a neon light, you will see the barcode wavelengths of the hot gas spread out in front of your eye. Diagnostics Spectral lines are more than just chemical indicators. In fact, each line corresponds to a specific atomic state, and their wavelengths are well known from laboratory experiments. These lines are characterized by their energy, which comes from the structure of the atom. While atoms are much more complex and fleeting in reality, they can be thought of as similar to our solar system, where the nucleus, made up of heavy protons and neutrons, is like the sun, and the electrons are like the planets. Absorption and emission lines occur when the electrons move from one orbit to another. And energy is either added or removed in the form of a photon. Absorption occurs when a photon with the appropriate energy comes in and causes an electron to move to a higher orbit. Emission occurs when an electron falls to a lower orbit by releasing the extra energy to a photon. The energies needed to move between orbits are precisely defined and depend on the type and state of the atom. In very hot gases, the outer electrons may be stripped off entirely, and the atoms are said to be ionized. Because of their origin in fundamental physics, spectral lines are sensitive to many aspects of the physics of the gas. The temperature of the gas can be determined from the broadening of the lines, with hotter gas producing broader lines. The ratios of spectral line strengths can also provide information, such as the degree of ionization of the gas. Another use of spectral lines is to measure the movements of celestial bodies. The wavelength of a particular line is accurately known, so any slight shifts in that line may indicate movement of the source. If the entire star is moving away from us, then its spectrum shifts to the red due to the Doppler effect, if it is moving towards us, then it shifts to the blue. The amount of the shift can be measured by looking at spectral lines. On a larger scale, these redshifts have even revealed the expansion of the universe. In conclusion, Fraunhofer lines are an important tool in understanding the universe. By studying the chemical fingerprint of celestial bodies, astronomers can determine the chemical makeup of stars, galaxies, and planetary atmospheres. These lines also allow us to study the motions of celestial bodies and the expansion of the universe. Spectroscopy is a powerful technique that allows us to study these lines and the material that makes up celestial objects. We hope you enjoyed learning about Fraunhofer lines and the role they play in understanding the universe. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.